this is Jesus Manuel Menagarza. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, we're right in the middle of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and uh, I'm just keeping busy producing YouTube videos. Hope you like this video. I'm going to call this a video essentially basic, super basic uh, photography and video tips uh, for production. Okay, so if you're an entry level uh, or a beginning photographer or just want to uh, learn a couple new tricks, check out this video. It's uh, hopefully going to be useful for you. And of course, you can always contact me. Uh, I have my contact information below the description. I have my uh, website, which includes my email and my phone number. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. I hope you're doing well wherever you're at. Uh, first tip, <clears throat> I'm going to talk first focus on video. One of the things you got to consider when you're shooting video is you understand that wide angle lenses take up a lot of, you know, they, they want to take up a lot of uh, the image area. So to, if you need to get closer at a wide angle, your nose and a lot of certain features are going to look distorted. I see a lot of that right now on the news uh, shows and people doing reporting or programming from their house now uh, since they've been sequestered and they're doing self you know, self-isolation and uh, they're trying to keep their personal distance <laughs> and they have their and they have issues with their um, with their lens they shoot typically with some sort of basic wide angle lens and they shoot themselves and they look really bad as compared to what they typically look like in the studio where they have the photographer way back the, you know shooting the video and they uh they compress their features and they have, of course, makeup and hair and all kinds of good stuff like that. But at home, they look not as good as they do in the studio. So you understand why, because they're getting a little too close and their features, their nose, and, and it doesn't look right, okay. And of course, they shoot their video sometimes in their living room and stuff like that. The first few videos, I've noticed a lot of people uh, shot them in their homes and they just didn't know what they're doing. Uh, they don't have the experience a lot of you YouTubers have in creating high quality uh, videos from your house. So they didn't understand to use a microphone. I got a microphone right here, just out of the, at a camera, and it's connected. It's basically, it's a it's this very simple microphone. It's a $59 Rode Video Micro, and then it's connected to a, an extension cable. Uh, last week I tried to use a longer extension cable so I can go further back, because this is only about six feet long. And it had a lot of hum. Cheap extension cables often have issues. Okay, so this is the one I had, uh, I wanted to use, uh, induced a lot of hum. So that's the second thing I want to talk about. You know, a lot of your equipment, somewhere along the chain of events that's getting to your camera, uh, sometimes uh, can introduce hum, uh, noise, and other, other things that you don't want. want. So... So I went back to using my six foot higher quality Radio Shack cable that I bought in the, back in the uh, 80s and it's working perfectly fine. I think I bought it, maybe the 90s, who knows. But it's a high quality cable. In fact, I went online and ordered the best one I can find. And, and if it sounds good, I'm gonna give it a quick test, see how it sounds. And if it sounds good, I'm gonna keep it. If not, I'm just gonna return it and uh, send it back. Packing, okay. So, <clears throat> so we talked about the you know wide angle introduces issues okay the room you're in introduces issues if you can use a microphone uh, out of camera or right in front of you, you can have a you know a little usb microphone in front of you and that uh, will it be better than anything that'll be a lot better than your camera uh, i mean your microphone on your uh, camera typically okay and of course the third thing i talk about was the cable it's important to have a high quality cable you know uh, I produce videos, way back, not videos, uh, audio programs for radio and stuff that went nationally. And I remember one instance, I was the engineer on a program <clears throat> in a studio. And all of a sudden, the, 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 the chief producer was in the back going, what's that hum? And I go, let me go check. I think it's probably that cable, that new cable that we just bought. And I checked it and replaced it with another. Yeah, it was a cable. So the cable often times can introduce, be the XLR or just this... Uh, Basic, you know, mini cable can introduce issues, okay? Let's talk about photography. I only want to talk about three of each, so just to make this a quick video from my home. Photography. <clears throat> when you're shooting photographs, I see a lot of people, they, 
how they compose photographs, okay? The number one rule is to take into consideration the frame is broken up into one line here and one line here, and then it's broken up with a line right here. It's called the rule of thirds. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boxes. So you want to typically keep your eyes right around here on the top line of the rule of thirds. You do not want me out of frame or you don't want me in the middle of the frame. Just you jibber jabber. And sometimes I do this when I, I have issues of me being in the middle of the frame. When? When I shoot with my, you know, action camera and I, you know, it doesn't have a, doesn't have a, doesn't have a, a viewfinder. So I just sort of, sometimes I just have myself way in the center or way down here. And, and then I go, man, that's horrible. So try to keep yourself at the top line of, you know, for the rule of thirds. Take that into consideration. Just look up rule of thirds. It's a simple concept. It's a, it's an artistic concept. It's a concept about dealing with negative and positive, you know, uh, positive space and just uh, composition issues and a lot of stuff like that. So in video, you want to, you know, in photography, you want to make sure that you have, you know, a high quality lens. The primary, you know, if you can get a good one good lens, and typically you can get a good standard lens rather inexpensively. Once you get into zooms, zooms typically, you know, add, you know, optical issues, okay? So when you have a zoom lens, it's a big, bit of a compromise. So if you buy a prime lens, which like a 50 millimeter would be for a full frame camera, or 25 would be for a micro four thirds, you know, or 35 would be for an APS-C camera. So if you bought a 1.8 or a 1.4 lens, it's usually pretty good. So, you know, but once you get into all that, when you have something that's 24 to 70 or 12 to 60 or whatever, you know, the range is, inherently with a zoom lens you're going to have issues so if you have a multi you know massive me megapixel camera we're talking 36 40 50 100 megapixel 70 80 who knows megapixel camera you want a super sharp lens because now you your camera your camera now has a capacity to discern finer detail previously it said hey, yeah you know a mediocre lens is okay you know, you get a mediocre cheap lens and throw it on their zoom lens, whatever. And it'll still okay because it's only 8, 12, or 16 megapixels. But once you get it, you know, massive megapixels, you need a sharper lens. So to start off with, I recommend everybody get a standard lens, okay? For my Nikon here, this little Nikon here that I have here, I have, first lens I bought for it was the uh, the 1.4 50 millimeter G, okay? And it's because I looked on the chart, it was sharp. It was one of the sharpest lenses they made. And compared to like the 24 to 70 and the other lenses, those weren't as sharp. Even though they cost five, six times more dollars, they weren't as sharp. So you'd be surprised what you can photograph with a 50 millimeter, millimeter lens, I can't even say it, on a standard, you know, full frame camera, okay? It's, it's surprising. A lot of photographers back in the 40s and 50s used to only use, uh, and 60s, used to only use a 50 millimeter lens. One of the most famous photographers out there uh, shot only with a 50 millimeter lens, and he's internationally famous, so it's up to you, okay? Of course, zoom lenses are very, very, very nice, and typically you get what you pay for with a high quality zoom. Another thing I wanted to suggest, it's only three tips, so I talked about, uh, you know, the composition, I talked about the lens. The third thing, uh, final thing, is how you hold your camera, okay? Typically, since elementary school, I place my camera like this, okay? I place it like this, and then I put my hand over here, okay? And that supports the lens, and I usually have my elbow close to my body. As long as I'm not running after somebody, and it's, and I'm not... <laughs> You know, my lungs are going in and out like this. If that happens, I move out because I, you know, the, the breathing transmits to the camera. So, but typically I hold the camera here. If I'm, it's a nice casual photo shoot. I photograph like this and then I put it up to my lid, eyes and I photograph like this. And if I want to, I just move this to this. This is basically this, the support. And that's it, okay? And if you have a mirror, you can look like this 
you can hold both arms like this. This becomes a tripod, okay? Most people, you know, 18 to uh, 60 or so, that are in decent shape, doesn't, don't have any physical issues, can hold the camera for about a 60th, 1 60th of a second. If you're in really great shape and you have a lot of control, you can do it down to 15th. To be safe, most of us shoot at 1 25th of a second or above, okay? And this is a bonus uh, tip, and you probably already know this. I'm just uh, going over some basic photography tips that I usually teach in my photography classes when I used to teach in San Francisco, in the LA area, and now here in uh, uh, northern uh, Texas. So, usually you want to shoot <clears throat> outdoors at 100 ASA, 200 ASA, maybe 400 ASA, because the cameras inherently have less grain, less issues at 100, 200, or 400. When you're indoors, all of a sudden it changes. You need you know, light gathering, especially if in low light situation, unless you have studio lights, of course you have studio lights. You can shoot at a 400, 800, 1600. And if your camera is capable, some cameras are more capable than others. Some are designed to shoot in low light, fantastic photographs, they absolutely look fantastic. You know, at 16, 13, 3200, okay? So that's my tip for the day. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I'm a photo instructor for, since, I've been teaching photography since the uh, 80s, since the 80s. I've always had multiple jobs. You know, when I was in San Francisco, I taught at the university down there, and I also taught, you know, <laughs> driver's ed on the weekends, and then I also worked at a camera store also. So I had three jobs, because I needed the money. Living in San Francisco was what? It was super, super, super expensive. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. I look forward to hearing from your comments. and I, I really enjoy reading your comments. I learn a lot from all of you out there. And we all have a lot to learn from each other. I'm not the world's greatest photographer. Nobody's the world's greatest photographer. There's some people that are great at fashion. They have a sensitivity for fashion. Other people are great at cars, skateboards, you know, motorcycles. They know how to shoot action and catch the uh, the uh, energy of a, a vehicle like that. Others are good at photographing news events and are quick at just re reacting to things. Others are good at sports and uh, some are really, really enjoy shooting landscapes, okay, and infrastructure. So we're all good at certain things, okay. Some are good at people, some are good at, pe uh, uh, you know, infrastructure and landscapes. Hope you're good at something, at least working at it, okay. If you have any questions, hope you're doing well. Uh, during this uh, pandemic, we're in the middle of it. It's, uh, you know, mid-March. What's well, mid-April? Well, it seems like it's been forever. <laughs> I've been stuck at home, uh, you know, for quite a while. At least I have my wife with me. She's teaching her classes online. and I'm uh, working on the YouTube channel and also working on the house outside and inside. Again, what? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing fantastic. From Fort Worth, Texas, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. And don't forget to leave your kind and friendly comments, questions, suggestions below the description. I would appreciate those too. And again, in advance, thank you very much. <clears throat> Starting to get a little bit of sore throat. I apologize. Again, from Fort Worth, Texas, this has been Jesus Manuel Menagarza. Gracias, adios, bye bye.